So there's a lot of pockets of weakness nowadays. And we try to fill those pockets with lies. I did it for many years. So I'm out here in Colorado for a conference. And I go to the gym and this trainer calls me over to talk to this group of people he's training. He says, hey man, what are you doing out here? So I tell him, he says, what kind of workouts are you doing? I said, well, one workout I'm doing is I'm climbing up this mountain, 3,000 feet, three miles. Because I do that every day. So the next day I'm out looking for him. Didn't see him. A couple days later, looking for him. Didn't see him. So here I am on the mountain again, climbing it. And there's a gondola that takes you up, takes you down. I'm going up it. I see a gondola. I'm about five minutes from the top. I look up at the gondola. I see him, face pressed up against the, the uh, window, looking at me, our eyes meet. It's called the look when you take a mother soul. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Practice what you preach. Stay hard. So when you start thinking, hey, I should do this, go fucking do it. Okay, because the self-talk that naturally rebounds from not doing those things that you tell yourself you're going to fucking do is what literally destroys your self-esteem and your self-confidence, which is why most people have none. It's also why most people think that self-esteem and self-confidence are things that people are born with, not things that people create. This is not a trait, it's a fucking skill. If you invest into it, you will get a withdrawal out of it. Okay, if you invest into keeping those promises to yourself without any compromise, zero fucking compromise, this is getting done no matter what, what comes back is you know that you're a person of integrity that you can trust and that gives you confidence. So you walk in a room and you're like, none of these motherfuckers do what I fucking do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now you're figuring out, holy shit, you're actually pretty fucking powerful. Yeah. And that snowballs from there. But it all starts with the lies you tell to yourself. You have to have the truth to have a starting point. If I'm lying to you about who I am, or I'm lying to you about whatever, there's no starting point. There's a false reality. Right. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I gonna start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point, all right? <laughs> I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing. Nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. What's funny about failure is we're afraid to fail a lot of times because we're afraid to get those people telling us that we're not good. And 99.9% .9 of those people who are in your ear after you fail haven't even tried what you're attempting to do. That's first off, but they have a voice. So that voice needs to be, you know, we're done. You don't need to talk to me anymore. Like when I felt the pull-up record, I was going for 4,020 pull-ups. And I felt it twice before I finally got it the third time. I had so many people telling me, you can't do it. And I was like, how many pull-ups have you done in your life? So that's the first thing. Look at who's talking to you negatively first. And failure is the only way to grow. The only way to grow for me, everything I've ever succeeded in, three hell weeks. You know, everything, Ranger School, everything I've ever failed, I failed miserably so many times. But what you do with that failure is you go back, you learn from it. And not just learn from it, I call it the live autopsy. Where you get all this stuff, you get a scratch piece of paper, and you start writing down, don't even acknowledge the fact that you failed. Mm -hmm. You're looking at it almost like the daggone light bulb. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this went wrong, that went wrong, that went wrong. And then you go back into it. Mm -hmm. All failure is, is a tool for success. Mm -hmm. It shows you how to get there. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to stay in the fight. Yes. That's the hard part though, after failure, all these voices start to say, no, we're not good enough, we're not good enough, we're not good enough. No, we haven't tried enough. You can't live your life being afraid to fail. All those failures made me the success in the day. Stay hard, stay in the fight. I knew for me to get to where I wanted to go, where I had to go, there could be no balance. Mm. I'm such in a f***ed up spot in my life, I'm such in a dark place, that if I don't dedicate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 
365 a year to becoming a better human being, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And so the people who were in my family had to realize, hey, I'm sorry that you may think I'm neglecting you right now, but if I don't fix myself, I won't be good for anybody. Balance is important, but you have to first go to war with yourself. You gotta figure out what you're about and be proud of who you are before you start to get that teeter-totter nice and balanced out. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. That's what the storm is all about. When you can't control what's happening until you control how you respond to it, that's where your power is. We have this thing we talk about, we want to be legendary. We don't want to be good, we don't want to be great. We believe those are superstars, they come and go. We want to be legends, we want to go down in history in whatever we do. Everybody's got to find their own path. And you have to realize that when you get on that path, you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have bad fuck ups. Like really bad. But as long as you're willing to learn and you're willing to take those as lessons about and you're smart enough to not make those same mistakes over and over and over again, there's really nothing that you can't do. Nobody's going to believe in you. Nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it. The work is going to come before the belief, which means you're going to have to work for a long time by yourself with no applause, with no awards, with nobody telling you good job. And then once you start to build something and people start to see the momentum and they start to see the result and you start doing some things, then you're going to get a little belief. I had to make a man in what I thought a man was supposed to be in my mind. I created what I thought a man was supposed to be in my mind. And that's what I started doing. I looked at myself in the mirror. I wasn't proud of who I was. And I, and I kept on backsliding, backsliding. And I made the decision. And I was 297 pounds. I gained 125 pounds. I was 175 to 297. Had, had left the military, left the Air Force, and I was working for Ecolab, making thousand dollars a month. I was at the bottom of the barrel. I, I become exactly what life had made me, and what I had made me too. I said, I, I'm going to die trying. Mm. I don't give a fuck what it does to me. I don't give a fuck if I break myself off. I don't care if I lose legs. I don't care if I have stress. I, I don't care what it is. I don't care how much pain I go through. I don't care, but this reflection in the mirror will change or I will die trying. Like you don't judge a person by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge them by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. Your hardships, your challenges, your situation will either be the reason you don't make it or it will be the story you tell when you do make it and you get to make that choice. You've got six months left in the year. That's a lot of game to be played. The amount of things that we have zero control over is very small. So many things if we look at ourselves and say, what could I do better? What could I do different? How can I make an adjustment here? And then you actually have to solve the problem. That's what you have to do. Your feelings don't matter. That's the deal. You may feel like doing something. Maybe you don't feel like doing something. Doesn't matter. Get out there and do what you're supposed to do, whether you feel like it or not. Where you find out where you're at is when you're at the lowest part of your life. So I started to develop a whole new mindset. Like the lowest part of my life used to make me feel bad. The lowest part of my life now, it actually gives me strength because I know so many people stop. That's where they quit. Right. When, when they get to the fucking sewer of life versus looking at it saying, oh yeah, motherfucker, now let's see what the f is up. <laughs> let's see what the f is up now. Let's see the millions of men out here in this world. They're not going where I'm willing to go now. This is where people stop. And this is where I started to develop the different mentality is, you want to test my resolve? You want to test my ability to go the distance? You want to see where your life ends and mine begins? That's where that mentality started for me. Because mm. I started saying, man, you always end up in the dungeon. You got to find strength in that motherfucker, or no one else does. I do want to say this to those of you who are watching who are not yet where you want to be, like keep going. Like, keep going, don't quit. You're already in pain, you're already struggling. Like, get something for your pain. It doesn't make sense to go through pain and then not get nothing on the other side of it. If an eagle ever sees a bird flying at the same altitude that he's flying at, it must be another eagle. It must be another eagle. Cause pigeons don't fly at the altitudes of eagles. And if you find yourself flying with pigeons, you may be flying too low. You cry about losing all day. You can make every 
fucking reason about losing all day. No one cares. People only care about the fucking winners. If you win in life, your life's gonna be good. If you lose in life, your life's gonna be harder. That's reality. And I would much rather be an aggressive winner than a fucking passive loser. Winners fucking win. True. That's it. Without my self-discipline, there is no David Goggins. Mm. Like, I can't like stop reading. I won't be able to read tomorrow. It will, I will lose it that fast. I cannot stop going to the gym. My mind is set up in a spot where, hey, the second I stop, it wants to stop. Because I had a quitting mind growing up. When you get beat the shit out of you all the time, your mind wants to go to that nice spot where you're comforted, where you're not trying, where shit is easy. That's where your mind, it doesn't want to think. You have all these things in the mind and, and the mind can only absorb so much shit. So all the pain that has to go through, it, does, it wants to push it away and say, let's not do that. So every day I'm fighting where the mind wants to go. It's a constant evolution, man. I'm, I've never arrived. I'm, I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, oh man, I went through Navy SEAL training being f***ed up. I ran over 7,000 miles in 2007 being f***ed up. I did pull-up records being f***ed up. Now that the mind is so f strong that the body catch the mind. So that's now where I'm at. So I'm always trying to reinvent the wheel and see what I'm capable of next. If you can take the negative and turn that into immediate action, bro, you cannot be beat. How do you beat someone like that? How do you beat someone that the more negative energy you throw at them, the better they get? If you're struggling right now and you're having a hard time and you're pissed off and you're frustrated, know two things. One, you're not alone. Two, this is necessary for you to get where you want to go. And if you quit, if you falter, if you stop, all of the pain will be for nothing. And you need to remember that. When you're knocked down, you gotta be that motherfucker who, whoever knocks you down, they gotta be afraid they knocked you the down. <laughs> they be like, oh man, this ain't gonna end good. If you made a mistake, knock this motherfucker down because he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. That has to be the way you look at life. It's that mentality. It's that mentality of if you knock me the f down, you're gonna say to yourself, I shouldn't have done that to that mother. That's the mentality that keeps you in the fight.